Welcome to another Recall by Data IQ video. I'm Kenji, a YouTuber and the Director of Data Science at a consulting firm specializing in sports analytics. In 2003, the book Moneyball took the sports world by storm. It profiled how the Oakland A's used math and analytics to have an unprecedented playoff run in the face of massive budget constraints and a clear lack of talent. Today, we're gonna to talk about how this movement transformed how sports are played. At the end, we're also gonna to touch on how you can get involved in sports analytics, so be sure to stay tuned for that. You might be surprised, but in 2003, after the book Moneyball came out, teams didn't make a mad rush to universities to recruit PhDs to use math to help them win. In reality, most sports teams they kind of turned up their nose at the value that analytics had in helping teams win. For better or for worse, sports have many processes that are grounded in tradition and superstition. This sentiment has held many teams from adopting the power of analytics. The idea of using math to improve baseball outcomes has been around almost as long as the game of baseball has. But most teams have really only used the most rudimentary methods to evaluate players and improve their probability of winning. Statistics have always been more popular with fans. In 1971, the Society for American Baseball Research was founded. And by the early 1980s, fans and hobbyists were obsessed with analyzing baseball data. The leader of this movement was a man named Bill James, and he published an annual book called the Bill James Baseball Abstract, all about how math could be used to understand why teams win. Bill James popularized the analysis of baseball data and he gave it the name Sabermetrics. While the fans were crazy about advanced stats, only a few teams were actively using them before the book Moneyball came out in 2003. Actually, it wasn't until after Moneyball had a movie rendition in 2011 till some sports teams started to see the light. There were some growing pains, but for the most part, teams that invested in analytics began to win, and they started to win at an unprecedented rate. It also wasn't just in baseball. Teams in basketball, teams in soccer, football, golf, and even cricket began to use analytics to generate more wins for their organizations. But what exactly were the insights that they were gaining from this data? At first, across all sports, teams were using basic descriptive statistics to make decisions. For example, in baseball, teams were using batting average, which is roughly the number of hits that the player gets divided by the number of at-bats that they have. For a sport like basketball or soccer, teams looked at how often a player would score divided by how many attempts that they took to score. These are the types of stats that teams have been using for a long period of time. I wouldn't consider these advanced by any means. They're good, but they lack nuance. They also have one major flaw. With these types of statistics, it's difficult to evaluate how these things are directly related to wins. And as you'll come to find, wins and championships are the holy grail of all sports. The next phase of sports analytics maturity came when teams were able to start evaluating how much a player contributed to wins or contributed directly to scoring. In my opinion, the single statistic that changed modern sports as we know it is called wins above replacement, otherwise known as war. While it has its flaws, war allows us to look at how many wins a player directly contributes to a team. The clear benefit of doing this is that we can compare players that play different positions with an apples to apples metric, which previously was very difficult to do. For example, we can compare how many wins a specific pitcher adds to a game versus a center fielder. So in baseball, these two players have very different responsibilities and impacts on the game, but now we can compare them directly and see which one adds more value to the team. In soccer, you could compare maybe a striker and a defender if there was a similar metric, which I'm sure there is for that sport. The math behind war is a bit outside the scope of this video, but in essence, you evaluate how much better each individual player is than the average player at their position. With this, you can get a gauge of how many wins that they're adding to their team compared to a baseline. Again, this isn't unique to baseball either. A similar concept is used with basketball with the win share statistic and in golf with the strokes gain metric. Now with this, teams were now able to evaluate their rosters as an aggregate of wins gained and could make decisions on who to keep or trade based on the total wins gained of the entire team. This again was a completely novel concept and changed sports analytics as we know it. And this leads us to where we are now. While aggregate metrics like war are still very useful, we now have even more powerful tools to evaluate players and predict performance. With the advent of increased compute power, additional data and machine learning techniques, teams can now predict outcomes in varying scenarios, they can optimize their practice time, and they can even maximize performance based on rest and nutrition. 
In baseball, teams are using machine learning to predict which pitch will be coming next, or even recommend which pitch to be thrown to a specific batter at a specific time. In other sports like soccer, teams are using machine learning models to optimize rest and fatigue so that players reduce their chances of injury. And in American football, teams and the league itself is actually analyzing data to make changes to the rules and to the equipment to reduce the likelihood of concussions or other scary situations on the field. In the future, I expect teams will start using more biometric data to optimize health off the field as well. To me, this is one of the greatest advancements that we'll see in the next few years. As wearables like something like this become more mainstream, I expect we'll see another analytics revolution within the sports domain. Currently, every major league baseball team has at least one analytics person on staff. Clearly in this specific sport, teams see the value of analytics now. On the other hand, at least in American sports like basketball and football, not every team has adopted these tools. I'm quite certain that in the future we'll see an even larger divide between the haves and have nots within sports analytics. This does beg the question, why has baseball led this revolution? Don't other sports have high quality data? Why aren't they adopting as quickly? I think it pays to dive into this question just a little bit more. Obviously, baseball analytics has been around for longer, but in most cases, other organizations can catch up quickly when it comes to analytics. The main difference between a lot of these sports is the nature of the game and the nature of the data. In baseball, plays are very neatly broken down into discrete events. Each at bat, each pitch can be broken and tabularized into a very structured data set. On the other hand, in sports like basketball and soccer, plays have far more variability and it's quite difficult to organize them. With more traditional analytics, the more tabular nature of data in baseball makes it far easier to analyze. Other sports have mainly lagged because the data is messier to work with. Actually, this is a great time to mention Data IQ. As teams use more and more advanced analytics to get wins, it pays for them to systematize their processes to get the most out of their data. More and more organizations are adopting Data IQ to create, share, and reuse their applications that leverage data and machine learning. For these teams, delivering analytics using the latest technologies at big data scale can have massive implications on winning, and that's what Data IQ promises. As more and more advanced machine learning techniques improve the analyst's ability to work with unstructured data, I expect teams will be finding incredible new ways to use the data that they have to win. Now, I might be biased, but I think sports analytics is an incredibly fascinating field to work in. How can you get involved in the domain? Unfortunately, there are pretty limited opportunities because there are so few professional sports teams. Still, there are plenty of places that you can get involved working with real data that these teams and organizations use. The first place that comes to mind is on Kaggle.com. Every year, Kaggle hosts the Big Data Bowl, and for this competition, the NFL opens up their data coffers and allows you to work with a great data set to solve a specific problem that the league faces. Kaggle also has a fun March Madness competition for college basketball that I've competed in the last few years. Another one that I'm familiar with is the Big Data Cup. So this is very similar to the Big Data Bowl, but it's focused on hockey analytics. As it so happens, both of these competitions are some of the best ways that you can break into the domain itself. Many teams are looking to recruit from these specific competitions. So I hope that this has been informative about sports analytics and the landscape there. If you're interested in how data is used in other domains, you should check out some of the other Recall by Data IQ videos. Also, feel free to shoot over to my YouTube channel if you're interested in more data science and sports analytics content. Until next time, good luck on your data science journey.